Hey guys, in this video we are going to learn how to install Drupal on our Mac machines. Um, before we can install Drupal, we are going to need a LAMP stack on our machine. What that means is we will need a Linux. Um, a Linux is the operating system similar to Microsoft Windows and Mac OS X. Next, we are going to need an Apache web server. Now, an Apache web server provides the mechanics for getting a web page to a user. Next, we are going to need a MySQL database server. Essentially, this is where you will be saving all information that you need for your website. And finally, we are going to be using PHP. PHP is a programming language that we will be using throughout our Drupal journey. Um, our Drupal journey will not just consist of PHP, but also a bit of um, HTML, some Twig, some CSS, some JavaScript, and maybe some React if we want to do a bit of headless Drupal. Um, one place I do recommend to go to to install this LAMP stack is this website here, getgraph.org. Now, it's quite extensive, but really useful. If you are able to go through this, then you should have no problems following me in the future videos or tutorials that should be coming up. This will allow you to set up Apache on your Mac machine with multiple PHP versions. Now, this is great, especially for perhaps existing developers or maybe um, a developer who is only restricted to, let's say, PHP 7.2, um, whereas the, your local machine might only have PHP 7.4. This will allow you to easily switch between um, PHP versions. Um, okay, next we are going to get the command that would allow us to easily install Drupal on our machine. So, I will again, I'll add this link to the um, description below as well as this link here. Now, if we scroll down a bit, what we want to really focus on is this command here. Composer create project Drupal slash recommend project and then my site's name dir. This dir means directory. This can be anything you want it to be. So, I am going to copy this. And then open up my terminal. So on Mac, I use item. But if you have another terminal or another preference that you want to use, then please, by all means, use it. Before we run this command, I tend to keep all my Drupal projects within one place, one directory. It's entirely up to you where you want to keep it. But I tend to keep mine within this directory. So that's var dub 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 slash code post. Now, code, it could be anything that you want it to be, providing that it does exist. If it doesn't, you can make it yourself. Um, now that we are in my um, project directory, I'll just type LSL just to give you guys a brief idea of what it's actually here. Um, we are now going to copy and paste that command. And then remember what I said earlier about the, the my site name derb. That could be anything you want. So we are going to. Let's create a website about laptops. So let's call it laptops. After that, hit enter on your keyboard and then just wait. Cool, we're finished. Well, I say if we're finished, we've only just installed Drupal on our local machine now. So now what's next to do is to actually check, um, go into our, our project. So CD laptops. And then let's do ls-l. And here's our site. But we now need to actually access this website through our web browser. So if you had followed the LAMP stack um, tutorial from getgraph.org, then you would know what's going to happen next. If you haven't, I would say pause this video, go through that tutorial, then come back to this part of the video. Now, first we need to add a host entry. So that would be sudo nano etc slash hosts. Now this file contains a list of all your, let's say your local projects. Um, it will have, it will have a list of all your um, websites on your machine. So let's type 127.0.0.1. That's the IP address of your local machine. And we are going to call it laptops.codepost.local. And then we are going to save this and get out. So that's control X on your keyboard and then Y for yes. And then enter to save. Cool. So next, what we have to now do is edit our vhost file. Now, again, you have to add follow the LAMP stack tutorial to understand what's happening here. Now I will edit my, my path might be a bit different to yours, but the main thing is for you to actually 
find wherever your HTTP DV host file is. So mine actually sits here, hoping I can actually remember it. TTPD extra HTTPD V host.com. Great. So now I tend to just add every new project at the end of my V host file. But sometimes I do find it easier to just look for an existing um, entry and then just copy that. So I think I will copy this one here. Um, now remember the name that we added to our host entry was laptops dot code post dot local. I really do hope it was plural, not singular. But anyway, now let's get rid of this and let's make it laptops again slash web. So the path that you have to put here is the path that contains your index.php file. Now you don't need to add the SSL. If you don't have SSL enabled on your local machine, then make sure that you changed 443 to being 80 and that would work perfectly fine. But make sure this is commented out. But I'm gonna go back to 443 and then again, control X and then Y and then enter to save. Now, next thing we have to do is actually restart our Apache server. So that's sudo, oops, sudo Apache CTL dash K. The dash K allows us to see any errors that might pop up and then restart. So I have a few errors here, which I'm going to blur out because it nothing to do with the tutorial. But um, again, it, it's perfectly fine. So now what would happen now, if we go back to our browser, we should now be able to access laptops dots code post dot local and add a forward slash at the end. And yes, this is working. I have um, this error coming up because I'm using a self-signed certificate, but it's perfectly fine. Again, if you're using um, your own self-signed certificate on your local, click advanced and then click proceed to laptop.codepost.local. Now I'm going to choose English because that's the only language I understand. Click save and continue. For now, we are going to go with just the standard. Great. Now, I purposely wanted to um, wanted us to come and encounter these things so that we can go through them together. Now, the first error we're seeing here is file system. The directory site's fa default files does not exist. An attempt to create this directory field possibly due to a permissions problem. That's perfectly fine. What this directory does is anytime your users go on the website or, and maybe someone wants to upload a picture, that picture is then saved within this directory, but it does not exist at this present moment in time. So what we are going to do is go back to our terminal and then type CD web sites default and let's type ls L and you see, as it said, there is no file directory. So we are going to make that ourselves. So that's mkdir space files. Great. But we have one more step to do here. Now, as you can see, we've created a file directory, but it is owned by myself. It is not owned by the web user. So we now want to change the owner of this file directory to being the web user. Without doing this, um, the website will not be able to allow users to upload files. So that's sudo change ownership, change own for short. Um, normally I would do a dash R if the um, folder already exists. This means recursive to allow to allow, allow the permissions on all the files and folders within this directory to be changed as well. But it's empty, but I just use it as a, it's just a habit. Now the user we want to change it to is web user. So that's underscore www colon underscore www space files cool so that worked without any errors now if we type lsl dash ls dash l again we should now see that files is now owned by the web user so let's go back to our web browser refresh this page and hopefully this error should go but this will still remain cool so that worked so now this error is telling us that the drupal installer requires that you create a site's default settings.php file so it's actually giving us the instructions on what to do. Copy the existing default one to this and then move on. So again, back to the terminal. And as you can see, that's this file it's telling us to copy. So how to do this on Mac is CP 
and then double click this and not many people know this when you click double click something within your terminal it actually copies it for you so i'm going to just hit command v and that's it and now we are going to name this setting.php so the cp command is the existing file to being the new file and then hit enter now if we type ls-l again we now see the setting.php file now let's go back hoping that there should be no more errors um cool so we've created a file but now it's saying it's not writable so what we would should do now is at least let the web user have access to this file but seeing as it's your local what we can do is actually give it another um, permission which we definitely would not do on a production environment but as your local it's perfectly fine so this time we're going to do a type sudo change modification which is chmod and then we're going to set this to 777 and then setting.php hit enter go back to your browser and this should vanish perfect now we're going to have this error which is perfectly fine this is only for i would recommend it to be on production environment you definitely do not want um php op code caching on your um, local environments or you'll find that anytime you change your code nothing's actually happening but it's fine when we are going to continue anyway next we are going to give it a database so let's call this laptops lowercase laptops websites and we are going to call this let's give it root now we're going to encounter an error, but that's fine. I want that to happen on purpose just to show you guys what happens. Cool. Now this is saying it cannot find a database. That's correct because we haven't created it yet. So what I definitely recommend is you guys installing um, SQL Pro. It's a great database software, SQL Pro. I don't think there's a Windows version, but this is what I use on my Mac. I already have this. So I'm going to try open it up now. So now what we want to do is create the database. So once you open our SQL Pro, click database, then add database and give it any name you want. I'm going to call it laptops website and the default settings are perfectly fine here. So now click add and then let's go back to our website. So now we've created our laptops website date, um, database. Now your username and password is really does depend on what you had set it to be, especially if you had followed this tutorial here, they, at a point you would have installed MySQL and you would have created at least a, a secure password. But by default, you would have a username called root and then a password would be whatever you set it to be. So I'm going to add mine and I click save and continue. So now just sit back and then wait for Drupal to finish installing. Perfect. So now that's done. Um, this warning message here is just telling us that all changes have been made to our settings.php file, the file we created earlier. So we can now remove the right permissions. This is just to make sure we don't um, get into like hacking issues or whatever. Um, so now this page is where we enter details about our website. So site name, I'm going to call the laptop website, email address. I'm just going to put my normal one. Okay. Next username. Um, let's call it admin password for this tutorial sake. I'm going to call it, make it laptop one, two, three laptop one, two, three default country. United Kingdom. Um, I would say have this checked all the time just so you can receive security updates to your emails. Uh, click save and continue. Should be finishing and there we have it. We have actually installed Drupal on our local machine. Uh, mind you, nobody can access this URL if you were to give this to someone, somebody else to access it they would not be able to get it. Only you can access this. Um, that's it. Um, next video, we'll be learning how to install modules. If you got stuck or some things didn't make sense, please do get in touch, drop a comment. Um, I'll add my email address at the bottom of the video as well. Um, sorry, I'll add my, vid my email in the description. 
Um, yeah, that's it. <laughs>